Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today's question is, how much do electric vehicle batteries degrade over the years? And that's a really important question because that's the most expensive part of the vehicle. So I've got some cars here today I'm going to take a look at, and we'll take a look at their battery health. And they're from a few, few different years. The far one over here, we have a 2023 Nissan uh, Leaf SL, uh, sorry, SV Plus, so that's the long range battery. The next one we have is a 2022 Nissan Leaf SL Plus, again, the long range battery. And then the third car we have is a 2019 Nissan Leaf SL with a long range battery. So all three cars have the long range 62 kilowatt hour battery. So we're going to use a software called Leaf Spy, and we're going to take a look at how the battery has held up over the years. We're gonna look at the battery state of health and I'll show you how that works. So follow me and let's take a look at the first car, the 2023 Nissan Leaf. Okay, this first car has uh, 27,000 kilometers on it. And um, we'll take a look now at the Leaf Spy data here that it's showing. So if you look in the top line there, it says battery stats, amp hour, 166.9. That's the battery capacity. And <clears throat> compared to new, the next uh, item over, SOH, which stands for state of health, this one has 95.95% of its original battery capacity from brand new. So that's uh, pretty good still. And if we go down a couple more lines, you can see the odometer. And then it says 74 QCs. That means it's had 74 quick charges or level three DC rapid fast charges. And it's had 351 L1, L2. So that's AC charges, whether it's 120 or 240 volts. The battery is quite well balanced with 10 millivolts. Difference between the, uh, this is the graph here of all the different battery cells. It's showing you the difference between the cell with the highest voltage and the cell with the lowest voltage. So 10 millivolts is like 0 0.001 um, volts. Uh, so that's uh, very good. And uh, interestingly here, it says state of SOC, state of charge is showing at 94.7%, which is the, the true state of charge. So that means it's you know 94% fully charged, but on the dashboard, it shows the user that it's at 100%. So what's happening there is that it's not fully charging the battery. It's saving some reserve at the top and it saves some at the bottom as well. And it does that for longevity of the battery. It never actually fully charges up to 100% on this display. It will stay at you know 95% maximum. But to the user, we would actually never know that because it's showing 100% here. Also, beside the battery charge there, it says 265 kilometers. That's uh, the guess uh, by the car as to how far it's going to be able to go on this charge. And uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, I would really ignore that number. That number is just a guess on the car's part, uh, depending on all kinds of factors, how it's been driven recently, the temperature outside, how your climate control is set. And it's generally not very accurate so I wouldn't use that to determine what the battery uh, state of health is. This number here on the top of this graph really shows the true state of health as calculated by the car, 95.95%. Okay, so this is the 2023 LEAF. Let's switch over to the 2022. All right, in the second car now, the 2022 Leaf SL. Uh, you can see in this screen here, we're at 92% charge level and it's guessing 236 kilometers. But let's take a look at our Leaf Spy data. So this one has 21,000 kilometers on it and the state of health is 94.79%. Uh, so pretty close uh, with, with the other one. And if you take a look here on the third line down, you can see there was 86 QCs or quick charges and 91 L1, L2s. So level one, level two charges. 
uh, the AC 120 or 240 volt charges. And we look at the cell balancing in this one, also 10 millivolts. So that means the top and the bottom voltage of the cells is only 10 millivolts apart, which is very small, which is great. And then again, this SOC here, state of charge, is at 88%. <clears throat> again, comparing that to the screen here, 92. So and Nissan just shows you on the screen here something that's slightly different to make you feel uh, comfortable, but the reality is here for the reasons we described in the other vehicle. So this is the data on car number two and the, tw the 2022. Now we're going to go over to the 2019 and see what that one is. Okay, third car here. This one's at 92% state of charge. And it does have a little yellow light on there for tire pressure, so I'll have to look at that. But anyway, let's take a look over here at the Leaf Spy data. So this is the 2019 vehicle, and it says state of health is 89.36%. So it is lower than the other ones as expected, but not that much lower. And the odometer is 117,000 kilometers. And in its lifetime, it's had 39 uh, quick charges or rapid charge level three DC fast charges. And it's had 1,324 L1s and L2s or AC charges, either 120 or 240. This battery is also well balanced at 10 millivolts. So the, all the cars seem to be the same in terms of their uh, cell balancing from the bottom voltage to the top voltage of the vehicle. And then this one here, yeah, current state of charge, which is not really too relevant to the discussion. This one says 90%. And on the screen here, as a reminder, it did say 92. So again, it's just slightly different. But this is the stats on the 2019 vehicle. So let's compare all the data we found. Okay, let's look at some of the data here. On these three cars when we put them side by side so you can see i've plotted everything here on a spreadsheet and summarized the data so the first car on the far right it actually has it's the newest but it has slightly more mileage on it at 27,000 kilometers or 17 miles and but if we go over to the amp hours remaining and the state of health you can see i've done a little calculation here so the amp hours now of 166 and then the state of health of 95.95 what i did is i took that number and calculated it out to figure out what were the amp hours when it was brand new and interestingly this 2023 had 173.1 amp hours calculated when brand new but the other two cars have 176.4 when brand new so interesting uh, pr that implies to me that they did modify the battery chemistry somehow or somewhat between 22 which is this one and 23 which is this one so that's why those numbers don't quite match up um, but having said that, the state of health is still newer. Even though the, the newer car has more mileage on it, the state of health is still better than the little bit older car with a slightly older, uh, with a slightly lower state of health. And then if we look at the oldest car, the 2019, that one is only down to 89% state of health <clears throat> after 117,000 kilometers or. 73,000 miles. So while you can tell that age does make a difference and distance makes a difference, the battery state of health is still actually fairly good for this 2019 vehicle. And if we keep going over on the chart here to the right side, you can see interestingly the first and third vehicles to me are a fairly standard 
uh, number of charges, quick charges versus AC charges. The second vehicle only has 91 AC charges, which is interesting. And the distance between each charge is on the far right, 74.6 miles or 119 kilometers per charge, which honestly doesn't make a big difference. But it's just been charged with fewer sessions, so it implies that it had deeper discharges each time it was discharged. Having said that though, it doesn't seem to have had an ill effect on battery capacity or longevity. All three vehicles seem to have really nice battery longevity. So if you're looking at a used EV, you know, a car that's 2019 with this uh, older kilometers, it still has a fairly good amount of range left. That implies it's probably a good value in that way. And, um, you know, I guess some tips on maintaining batteries over the years is you want to avoid charging it to 100%. Avoid charging it to zero, or discharging to 0%. They also say you want to minimize uh, the frequency of DC fast charging or level 3 charging. I see all three of these cars really haven't had very many. They've had a few dozen, but not hundreds and thousands of them. It seems like the chemistry of the long-range 62 kilowatt hour battery seems to have pretty good longevity. So do you have any Nissan Leafs with the long-range battery? How does your battery state of health compared to these ones what year is your car 2019 was the first year they offered the long range battery and it seems like it's held up pretty well being that it's a long range battery it also implies that the battery has gone through fewer cycles for the distance it's traveled as well because each discharge and recharge will allow it to go further so it's simply gone through fewer of those charge and discharge cycles over the years. Well, what conclusions can we draw from the information we've gathered here today with these three vehicles? Uh, the good news is, is that even though the battery is the most expensive part of the car, it's also got the longest warranty um, uh, uh, you know, uh, for any part of the car. They all come with an eight year warranty, which is good for 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. Looking at that 2019 LEAF, which is already six years old, the battery capacity is still very high and very good. So it's not showing any signs of significant issues or degradation. So uh, it looks like it's going to outlast its warranty. And the battery is likely going to last the life of the car, which is, I think, what the manufacturers intend, is the vehicle is intended to last the life of the car without ever having to change it. All these vehicles have lived in Canada as well for their entire life, so they've been exposed to a fairly cold climate. Nissan Leafs are known for not having battery cooling systems built into them, but you can see today is a fairly cold day and there's no need for cooling systems most of the year in Canada. If you're living in a warm or a hot climate where you're getting hot temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius on a regular basis, that may contribute to battery degradation. If you're putting your battery uh, through a lot of rapid charging or quick charging on those hot days. So how does this information compare to your Nissan LEAF? I'd be curious to know if you've got one of these long range vehicles that we can compare this chemistry and see how it fares over the years. What's your state of health? How many kilometers or miles do you have in your vehicle? Curious to know what yours is like comparing to these three. Hopefully you found this video interesting or informative. If you did, I appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for future videos. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.